Good morning. In the year of August 1999, I wrote a play and I called it Red December. And when my father was 13 years old, his father, Louis Rupert Erica, had died on December 27, 1941, while flying in a PBY Squadron 101, Wing 10, over the Holo Islands on a bombing mission in the early beginning of World War II. I studied and found information, and that is why I wrote my play for my father. During rehearsal, my mother Hilda sat and watched, and when it was over, I saw her crying, and she said to me, that the play would affect the World War II generation. After the opening performance, Red December, he too, he started crying and I embraced him. And he was thinking about his father when he was only 13 years old while watching Red December of how his father died gloriously in the two weeks after Pearl Harbor in World War II. Act two, scene one. It's December 11th, 1941, and PBY Patrol Wing 10 has landed on Ambom in the Dutch Indies. Lieutenant Simpson's crew of PBY-101 P-7 is settled in a new Quonset hut. Their cot arrangement has changed, but is similar to when they were in Cavite. Chulsey is pulling items out of his duffel bag and storing them in his footlocker. Hazelton is lying on his cot, reading his Bible, and Milstein is sitting on the edge of his cot polishing his shoes as the lights slowly rise. Hey guys, did you see that black smoke over Cavite after we took off? We sure got out of there in time, didn't we? Yeah, and we left a lot of our guys behind. When, when do you think we're, we're going up again? Are you eager to fly, Milstein? No, uh, I, I just want to be prepared, that's all. Those damn Japs sure stuck their noses in a hornet nest. Our Uncle Sam is pissed as hell. Do you ever get worried, Chelsea? I, I, I mean, there's no telling where this war's headed. It could go on for weeks or, or, or even years. Milstein, I had an old friend. Myrick Russell, who was a World War I doughboy in the trenches of Belgium. He saw war up close and personal, and he suffered mustard gas, lice, and rat-infested mud trenches. I asked him once if he, uh, if he was ever frightened, and he gave me a steely stare and said, Hell yes, I was scared. But worrying gets you nowhere. It's like jumping on a wooden rocking horse for a fast getaway. <laughs> if, if we stick together, Milstein, we'll come out okay. Yeah, we, we don't have any other choice. I, I, I like that, Chelsea. We'll be together up there. Park enters the hut. Hazelton, have you seen Thomas? He's swaying at the top of a palm tree looking for girls, Chief. Milstein, go find him. Uh, wait, but before you do, we're taking off for a surveillance run and 0800. Apparently, several Jap chips are streaming in our direction. Get off any letters you might want to send home and be ready to board at 0745. 
we'll have another briefing at that time. That's all I got. That's all I got to say, boys. Do you think there's a chance, Chief, that, that the war could stop? What they did at Pearl Harbor will be revenged, and they know that, Milstein. They have no intention of stopping, because if they did, we'd be chasing them all the way back to Tokyo anyway. Thomas enters. Hey, Chief, any chance for a leave? Not now, Thomas. We're taking off at 0800, so be ready. Parks, Essex. Hey, Tuesday. How can we fight without any bars and girls? Your dancing partners are the Japs now. Yeah, and I'll be stepping on their toes and kicking their balls across the dance floor. Chelsea grabs a leather bag and starts to exit. Where, where are you going, Chelsea? I'm on a small business endeavor. The market's going to shrink soon, so I'm catching them while they're still kicking. Do, do you mind if, if I tag along? Sure, yeah. Wait, wait. But don't interfere with my sailing transactions or you'll pay me double for my losses. Okay? All right, okay. So let's, let's get going. Chelsea and Milstein rush out of the hut as the lights slowly dim to black. Act two, scene two. It's December 15, 1941. The lights slowly rise on the empty Quonset hut. Within moments, Thomas bursts in laughing and dancing with Chelsea walking slowly behind him. <laughs> that was beautiful. Did you see that jab zero lit up? <laughs> On his second pass at four o'clock, I saw his eyes were as big as grapefruits. I rattled off two quick bursts and he couldn't believe what I was throwing at him. And he fried like a burnt marshmallow before he hit the water. <laughs> he spun like a broken winged bird, didn't he, Chelsea? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Yeah. Milstein was crapping in his pants when that Jap swooped out of the clouds and dived beneath our belly. I yelled, Crapstein, two o'clock, pull your goddamn trigger. The weasel froze like a block of ice. Milstein and Hazelton enter. Have you thought yet, Crapstein? Leave him alone, Thomas. Milstein goes to his cot and lies on his back with his hands over his face. The little wimp put us in a real sling up there. Why did you freeze, Milstein? That Jap was going to blast our asses off. Leave him alone, Thomas. Any one of us could have froze up there. But we didn't. And the little coward froze. Shut your goddamn mouth, Thomas. Okay, tough guy. Try doing it. Thomas pounces on Hazelton as Schulze and Milstein attempt to separate them. Knock it off, Thomas! Thomas notices Milstein and grabs him. Come on, you little coward. I'll teach you how to fight. Parks enters and pulls Thomas off of Milstein. Get the hell out of here, Thomas. If I ever see you on Milstein again, I'll send you home in a bag. He almost had us killed, Chief! Thomas exits with Milstein crying on the floor. Stand up! Stand up, Milstein! He's, he's right, Chief. I froze. I couldn't pull the, the damn trigger. I, I froze. It happened, and it's over, Milstein. <laughs> I let you down, Chief. Uh, I let everyone down. Nobody's hurt, Milstein. Let it go. What, what about the next time we go up, Chief? What then? You went up. And you're going to keep going up. Because that's our job, Milstein. We're all frightened, but we do what we have to do. Yeah, Milstein. My stomach jumps out of my mouth every time we lift off the ground. Yeah, Milstein. I was, I was pissing more than praying up there today. Milstein, 
It's not going to get any easier, but we're in this together and we're going to cover each other's backs. Now guys, get some rest while I talk some sense into Thomas's thick head. Chelsea helps Milstein up. I won't let you guys down again. I, I, I promise. There are no cowards in here. Don't forget that, Milstein. Parks exits while the others go to their cots. That, that Jab Zero was coming right at us and I, and I had him in my sights and, and, and when I tried to pull the trigger, it, it just wouldn't move. I, I was screaming inside. Fire! Pull the goddamn trigger! He's going to open up on us if we don't pull the goddamn trigger! Fire, Milstein! Fire! Fire! Milstein, I, I cut my earphones with both hands and froze, and everything went silent, and I couldn't hear a damn thing, but I, I saw the bullets ripping through the, the bird's skin, and... Me too, me too, Milstein. I, I, I learned something today. I, I realized how little faith I have, and, and I wasn't thinking about God up there, but only how I was going to die. Milstein, it isn't a make-a-believe movie when your ass is on the line up there. We're all afraid, Milstein, and don't forget that. Thomas. Thomas wasn't phased a bit. He had a smile on his face. Milstein, that's because he's crazy. There's so much hatred inside him that he's blind from having no fear. Yeah, me too, Milstein. I, I've seen three jarheads kicking Thomas's ass until he couldn't even walk straight. You'd think he'd want to get away from them, but... With his swollen eyes shut, he asked me, Where'd they go, Chelsea? Where, where did they go? And I'm not through fighting. He, he, he has something we don't have, guys. Is, is that what courage is? Maybe, Milstein. But we're human. And he's not. And I don't know if that is what courage is or just fear being covered over by hatred. Thomas and Parks enter. Milstein, I, I, I want to say, I, I, I lost, I lost my head and I, and I'm sorry for saying things that I shouldn't have and and I'm sorry about punching you. I, I, I had it coming, Thomas. You, you were right up there, and, and I hope I, I will never freeze up there again. Anyway, Milstein, I, I'm sorry. Thomas begins to exit. Thomas? Yeah, Milstein. I, I won't let you down again. Sure. Sure, Milstein. Thomas turns and grabs a towel off his cot and exits. How about having a hot shower and chow? What do you say, guys? I'm in. How about you, Milstein? I'll see you there in a, in a few minutes, guys. Don't wait too long, Milstein, or the hot water will be gone. Chelsea and Hazelton grab their towels and exit. Chief, I've wasted my whole life reading books. They never prepared me for, for this. Milstein. There's more sense in one of your books than this whole lousy war we're fighting. Yeah? Is that right, Chief? Yeah, Milstein. Oh, what? 
What did you do before joining the Navy, Chief? I lived on a, I lived on my father's farm in California with my two brothers and two sisters and my beautiful mother, Rosa. Why did you join up? My father's farm was too little for me and I wanted to see the big world. My mom wants me to take over a family shoe store. She always tells me <laughs> what people wear on their feet soon wear out. So you'll always be in business, son. <laughs> I told her I wanted to be a novelist and she said, Harvey, my stomach never feels full after reading a book, but shoes will carry you further, son. <laughs> so, you want to be a novelist, Milstein? Yeah. When I write short stories, they seem real to me. All the faces and sounds reach out to me as if I can touch them. It, it, it's everyday life that troubles me. When that zero was coming at us, I wanted to change the scenario, but I realized life doesn't allow edits. War's a reality check, Milstein. Imagination has no place for it. Ensign Kilroy enters and hands Parks a letter. This letter arrived while you were on your mission, Parks. There's a briefing at 1600 in Lieutenant Simpson's boardroom. How was your flight, Parks? We're still alive. That's good to hear. See you later, Parks. Thanks, Kilroy. You can keep calling me Kilroy. It sounds good. Okay, I'll see you later, Parks. Kilroy exits while Parks reads the telegram. His shoulders slump as he sits on his cot. Is it bad news, Chief? It's my orders to ship me back to the States. When are you going? A destroyer is leaving in two weeks and they want me on it. Maybe, maybe you'll see your son, Chief. That's good news, huh? You might be right, Milstein. But I've got to take a piss now. <laughs>